Ciao, everyone. This is Mike, and welcome to the Hardcore Italians podcast. We have a good one for you today. We have our operations manager, Santo Munizzi, on today. Santo, how you doing? I'm good. How are you, buddy? Hello to everyone over there, too. How's uh, the work day going so far, man? Everything's going good. Just kind of finishing up with some orders, and uh, you had said before, you know, hey, let's... Uh Let's get a little podcast going. So, of course, I obliged, and I'm happy to be here. Yeah, thanks, man. It's the middle of the work day. We both got stuff going on, but we figured to bang one out real quick, so appreciate yeah. it, man. Yeah, today's episode should be interesting because it's good if you want to learn a little bit more about us and kind of the process and how we got started. Um, I was thinking about it earlier. Normally, normally when I do an interview or I get on a podcast and people ask the background of you know how Hardcore started, I kind of give them the, the quicker version and just say, like, yeah, we started on social media and you know we grew it into a thing and this and that but i feel like the story with you is kind of the story of how it really got started because you were around like before when it was still a side thing Mm -hmm. and you were a part of the process when we kind of turned it up and got the warehouse and you were the first one really with us and everything like that so Mm -hmm. um before getting into kind of the details of how you work and how you help us out and things like that i kind of wanted to talk about how we met and how um just kind of how things came about so Sure. So it was, uh, oh man, I can't even remember to you. Probably what, 2014 to 2015, man. We were, uh, to all you that don't know, we were actually working together in a produce stand Mm -hmm. and um, just always talked about, uh, you had hardcore running at the time and we always talked about how cool it was. And, um, you know, we always said, yeah, we should work together sometime. And uh, here we are all these years later, about seven years later, and now we actually get to do it together from slinging produce to, uh, making t-shirts it's pretty cool man yeah exactly i remember um when we were working at the produce tent like Mm -hmm. basically we wanted to run we wanted to run the tent we were saying like hey we should open our own tent up and stuff Mm because it's pretty much we were kind of working how we are today Mm -hmm. i was kind of handling the front end of the tent and you were handling like the back end of the tent you were like Mm -hmm. stocking all the products and you know what i mean doing handling all that and i was kind of up front doing the cash register like Mm -hmm. you know doing that whole process but Mm-hmm. It's funny when I think about it, dude, because I feel like the way we met was we owe it to our, like our Uncle Nick's, both of our Uncle Nick's. <laughs> you ain't lying, man. You ain't lying. So dude. shout out to Nick Spacone and shout out to Nikki <laughs> Petreka. Um But yeah, man, they're like best buddies. Yeah. And yep. I feel like, dude, it was um just me and my cousin Anthony working at the time. And I kinda remember like we were working at the tent for six months or whatever. It was mm-hmm. every summer we were working. And I kinda remember um my dad saying hey there's gonna be a new guy working at the tent i just got him a job Mm -hmm. it's like my uncle nick's nephew Mm -hmm. you know and um at first i remember i don't know if anthony felt this way but at first i was like oh man someone's (laughs) gonna like mess up our system we got going on over here like me and anthony were just like pretty much the only two running the tent yeah yeah and then i was kind of like oh shit and then you know little did i know like we would be doing everything we're doing and how close we got we didn't even know before it was practice for the long haul here we are man yeah, exactly. So yep, yep. that job was, um, I don't know, we kind of always were working. We worked the job a couple summers, and I feel like we just always saw like kind of some flaws in the management. Sorry, Bob, if you're listening. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know, it was getting bad, and we kind of were we kind of were like almost being rebels, I'd say, because they, the management like started to, I don't know, they kind of were just like trying to do too many rules or like yep. doing the wrong decisions that we didn't really agree with, and it kind of started getting bad. Mm-hmm. And... I remember, um, you know, I kind of quit, but also got fired. I called the guy to quit, and then he didn't answer, and I didn't show up to work for, for the next day. So that. then he fired me, but I was mm-hmm. calling to quit, so I don't know what you would call it. But I just uh, I just remember, like, the day that I left, you know what I'm saying? You, like, you quit the same freaking day, man. It was yep. awesome. Like, yep. that yep. showed me a lot about you and kind of, like, your loyalty and the kind of guy you are to, like, I mean, you could have re- rode out the summer, made a few more bucks. Mm-hmm. You know, so that um that always stuck out to me and just it always stuck out to me like how hard you worked and you knew your shit too. No, oh, well thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So But hey, all that stuff that we went through, like you said, it all uh there's a plan for everything, man. Here we are today <laughs> doing it. So it was for a reason that we met each other, like you said, our uncle Nick's kinda involuntarily introduced us to each other and uh mm-hmm. here you go, man. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, exactly, man. So I know it was like you said, we would talk about hardcore at the ten a lot too. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I don't think either of us expected to, like, both be working on it full time at the time. I right. think I, you were kind of asking me, like, dude, why are you here if you're making money I like on this? You. Yep, yeah, yep. so that always stuck out with me. But basically, you know, once I graduated college, 
I started to um, focus more on hardcore. I wanted to try to make it a full time thing. So once I, you know, we got a warehouse and we were kind of um, debating how to put it all together. Mm-hmm. And that's when I gave you a call and said, "Hey, you down to work on hardcore and like be the guy who's you know doing the orders and all that for us?" And yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure you had another job at the time, too. I did. Afterwards, I picked up a uh, job doing some tile laying, tile and stuff. And uh, as soon as I got that call, man, I'll never forget. I was actually talking to your dad that morning. Then I talked to you, and I went to work the next day and said, hey, sorry, but here's my two weeks. I knew exactly I wanted to come over here. Yeah, it was awesome. That's it. That's what I'm saying. You are passionate yep. about it, man. And um, yep. I kind of just knew the kind of guy you were, and I figured you'd be perfect. And it, you know, I remember I was excited when you first like said yes and that everything was coming together, just like getting the warehouse and, you know, it, it was awesome. It worked out. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, dude, so to kind of get into hardcore a little bit, in my sure. opinion, it's like hardcore wouldn't be where it is today without you, man, because thank you, you, pr- you allowed it to grow like without, you know, me like being able to be a computer nerd kind of <laughs> and step away okay. from like, you know, checking out like the products and doing orders and like i mean because that's that requires a lot of focus a lot of um time and effort and like if i spent half my time doing that half my time on the computer Mm -hmm. i was kind of limiting you know what i could do as far as getting sales and like growing social media Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff so then when you started taking it over it really like was a a huge step especially like getting a warehouse so i know before i remember um when we first came in it was again it was all new to us remember we had boxes on the floor we didn't have any racks or nothing and um i don't think anyone really knew what to expect you know it was kind of just hey let's see where it goes um started off as me doing some wholesale stuff if i remember correctly right yeah and um it just took into pretty much everything else and i don't think either of us expected it to be like this Mm -hmm. um i think i could speak for you when i say this we love every minute of what we do and how it's being done and how it started yeah it's a pretty cool thing man it's pretty cool (laughs) yeah you gotta love it dude because i know me and you we both handle a lot but with Mm -hmm. you it's like you handle the order fulfillment wholesale like you said purchasing i mean stocking you're like in charge of the entire warehouse Mm -hmm. you know so you wear a lot of hats and you do a lot so you gotta love it to be able to do it yeah man i mean as far as all that goes just to give people a little background on how it works is you know i pretty much will do you know the sales online all the um, social media and things like that and then Mm -hmm. when you place an order chances are if you've ordered from us santo here has (laughs) touched your order in some way he either has ordered it He's either folded it, he's, you know, whatever, <laughs> tagged it, bagged it, shipped it, whatever it is, handled the customer service. I forgot to add that in, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what I mean? He was pretty much involved in some way, so he's kind of the guy who gets it all out, and, you know, it's one of the reasons why we have quick shipping because mm-hmm. I think, like, I think what you do, man, kind of separates us apart from not only competition but just, like, in general with a lot of e-commerce stores. Because, you know, most people, they kind of do drop shipping or they don't really put the time and effort into quality control sure. and making sure things are done right. I feel like that's like your specialty. You know what I'm saying? Well, thank you. So I, I would say to that, I would say, first of all, you got to give yourself a little bit more credit, too. I know you're saying about me, but you do quite a bit yourself, man. You wear <laughs> a lot of hats. So let's get that out first. Thanks, man. From there, I, I feel like, honestly... It just comes naturally because if you love your job, I was always told this as a kid by my father and my mother, if you love what you're doing, it's never work. You'll never be working and we love what we're doing. So like you said, it all it, it's not extra work to make sure your quality is there, make sure your shipping's there, make sure customers are happy, make sure all this stuff because it's you like your job, you like seeing it grow. I've been here from the start to watch it grow. Like I said, it all just comes kind of naturally, to be honest with you. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you feel like kind of everything, because you learned a lot. I know we both have, but Mm -hmm. do you feel like, you know, I know you said it's natural, but how long do you think like it really took you to get in a groove with just everything in general? Because there's so many components, you know? Yeah, I I mean, I would say when we first started obviously it was like oh yeah we're good we got this down whatever it took a lot more than those first six yeah. months a year well so. we had no systems in the beginning either no. like i know now no. there's like excel files and all this stuff written uh-huh. out and whatever yeah. handbooks and things like that but when you first started we just like you said we kind of just were figuring it out and everything was thrown into a warehouse and we were just kind of yeah. like let's see we were switching from weebly to shopify even yeah exactly <laughs> and that was my thing i always remember that was like my um again how it was before and how it was 
was now was I always reference the bins on the ground. Yeah. We had four high against the wall, and now we're at, what, 27 racks, 20 racks of clothing. Like you said, we have all of our organization. Again, kind of just the way we operate things and all of our systems, you know. Yeah. So it definitely, it's it's taken a few years for sure to get to where we are now. Obviously, we're always trying to improve everything. You're never going to be perfect. That's the one thing ever, you know, a lot of people kind of lose sight of Mm -hmm. um so we're constantly trying to improve everything i know you are i am myself um but yeah i would say it it did definitely take a couple years to get where we are now so Mm -hmm. we've come a long way yeah and so as far as to what you do with purchasing just in Mm -hmm. case like anyone has you know anyone that's ever curious about how that works with a site and how we kind of stock things and how much inventory we have how would you say you're doing that because you're basically ordering every single week you mm-hmm. know, do you want to shed a little light about when you restock a design or how we do new designs and how many you usually start with and when you kind of know when to reorder, mm-hmm. how you do seasonal stuff? Like you want to give kind of your thoughts behind how you do all that just so people know if they ever want to buy something, why it might be sold out or yeah. when they can expect new stuff. No, sure. So what we've learned over time is, um, again, as far as doing new things, we can't unfortunately start buying in thousands and stuff like that because obviously we want to see how people react, how people like it, all that good stuff. Um, so usually when I order to start, I usually stick to about, you know, 100, 150 pieces, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we kind of look at numbers and say, okay, well, these sizes sold most, I need this size or, um, Again, this sold out in three weeks. Yeah, let's go ahead and order four or five hundred more. Um, and that's where it helps. You know, um, I have a lot of different suppliers that you have to be in touch with, and you make phone calls every day to these people. So you definitely try to get stuff. And I have a system plan to where, you know, you try to get as quick as you can to restock certain things. Um, but obviously, it, it gets a little complicated when you have as many products as we do. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you try to keep up with it as much as you can. You know, you kind of find a rhythm and you keep going. You know, you try to, if something's out of stock, maybe after two weeks, you go ahead, okay, I really need to reorder this. Let's get some more in. And then, like I said, it kind of goes back to the um, kind of how much was sold. Then you say, okay, get a 200, 400, whatever it may be, you know. Mm-hmm. So. And then as far as the quality too, like I know, like kind of how I was mentioning quality control is pretty important so Mm -hmm. what do you say you do for the quality control as far as when you're ordering what do you try to do like design wise but then also when you get it in how do you do your checks and and kind of make sure everything's nice on the site yeah sure when i do as far as ordering um i always check our stuff before it gets this would be i'd say the first step before it gets to our silk screener we always have some of our team members look through the shirts make sure hey there's no holes in them there's no uh you know brown stains there's no scrap whatever it may be so that would be the first step from there it kind of comes in like you said the art so i'm on the phone with you know the our screening guy our artist every day making sure about sizes about colors about all that good stuff and then it goes into now after the screening process then we take them back here now i like myself and i also have you know our girls downstairs you know some of our workers will do it with me um but we always check every single piece by hand to ensure that again you know not everybody's perfect we may miss one out of a thousand but some people don't take that stuff and it's you know it shows when they get stuff and we want to make sure that what you're ordering is what you're getting and it's perfection to a t from the last stitch on that shirt hoodie hat whatever it may be exactly because mm-hmm. i feel like a lot of people don't realize when you're ordering shirts or whatever the amount of spoilage that can come along with oh, it yeah. like you said this one might have a hole this one might have a burn mark when they you know uh, run it through the silk screen machines and stuff sure so yeah it's like it's probably tedious because you got to check 500 t-shirts or whatever mm-hmm. and go one by one tag yep. them all and stuff like that so is it um i don't know is it kind of easy for you at this point you've been doing it for so long you're probably just oh, yeah. super quick with it now and yeah you know. after probably doing i don't know i'd probably set the bar maybe about thirty thousand shirts so far since <laughs> i've been here so you get used to it after a while you see what to look for and Mm -hmm. You know, you get the hang of it, that's for sure. As far as to, because I know you talked about just how you have a passion for everything, and Mm -hmm. I kind of want to at least bring up this about your Italian background, man, because we always joke about it. I think you already know what I'm about to say. Oh, I already know. So, the Soprasada, man. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Your family recipe is insane. You've been doing it. (laughs) I don't know how many generations has passed on or how many years you guys have been doing it, but it's literally the best, like, 
I've ever had. <laughs> well, thank you. We always joke that you could sell it for like two thousand a pound or whatever it is, <laughs> and that you guys would be like rich if you ever sold it. But it's right. like a family tradition that you guys keep just between yourselves. So, yeah, Yo. I love for you to kind of get into the details of that man and just explain how that because it's awesome. It's a cool Italian tradition. Sure. And sure. you know, wh- however much you're able to say about it, <laughs> about yeah, the background no. of the story, you're fine. Well, awesome. again, I know you know. Unfortunately, I can't say anything about the recipe. You know how that goes. That's that was my nanu, my grandfather. Um, he always taught us that. You know, my great grandfather. Unfortunately, I was never able to meet him. He died before I was born. But he actually from Calabria. When they came over, they brought um, you know all the old school. We used to make wine, the wine presses, everything. They all brought all those traditions. With one of them being making the soprasata. We've been doing it since the early teens back here, and my nan has been doing it. Um, it's always it, it's a tradition we want never want to let die in my family, and um, you know we make on average probably seven to eight hundred pounds of it a year. Between you know, there's about. Go ahead. That's so okay. much, dude. No. Yeah. No, there's about, you know, 10 of us that get together. We all kind of pitch in, and, uh, you know, everyone gets theirs a little hotter, maybe a little less hotter. Um, but, yeah, we run. It's like a two-day event always, and usually, you know, December, January, February. And, um, like I said, it's been a thing since I was – they have pictures of me two years old turning the cases, the standings. <laughs> you know, it's it's always been a thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how many does 800 pounds get 10 people, you think? So usually you get each stick's probably about a pound, maybe a little under a pound. So if I make 800 pounds, now you got to keep in mind, too, some of the fat comes out. We try to trim it. Um, so let's say if you have exactly 800 pounds, you'd probably make about 850 sticks, maybe 900 sticks of it, something like that. Mm-hmm. So I got gotcha. It's quite a few, that's for sure. Yeah. So, it's quite um, a few. And how many, like... Are you pretty much allowed or that you try to shoot for that you can, you're able to give out to other people, family and friends and stuff out of that? Like, well, pers- you, gotta, you know, what kind of percentage is that? You know how this is, too. A lot of people ask for it. You have to be pretty close with the Menizzi family if they let you get any super sad, you know, mm-hmm. that we call it super sad or soprasata. There's really no boundaries of, you know, we could give it all away, but it was always the thing my nanu said, and I have people all the time, oh, well, where can I buy it? I was actually just talking to someone the other day on the phone that uh, that asked me where he could <laughs> no buy way. it at or if he could buy it from me. Yeah. No way. And um, I told him, I said, look, I said, you can't buy it, unfortunately, but I tell you what, you're a pretty good friend. I, you know, thanks for letting me know I got you a couple next time I see you. Mm -hmm. That's usually how it goes. You know, we'll never accept money or anything from it, but if you're close to us, we have no problem. We like hearing how you said it, saying, oh, wow, this is, this is great. It tastes great. That's what we like to hear. You know, that's, that's what we want out of it. Yeah. It makes it a little bit more of like a special thing for sure. When you can't, you know, you only get one or two a year, maybe instead of like whatever, whenever you want, whenever, but it's just funny because it's not like, I don't know, once you give me one, for example, or a couple, it doesn't last long. Like it's, I, I open it right away and I'm done with it in like a couple of days max. So it's kind right. of funny. Like it's just literally a couple times a year, maybe <laughs> you get to have it and stuff. But when you do, right. it's awesome. Yeah. It makes it a good gift for sure, man. And, um, right, right. What, um, kind of getting into your grandparents about it. Like mm-hmm. why did they originally set out to keep it just in the family and do you, did they tell you anything about that or your parents tell you anything? You know, it was always, and, and unfortunately, I, I wish I had known my now knew more. He died when I was five years old. It was just always their thing, I think, of everybody makes super sad if you pay attention. A lot of guys make it. No one will ever have the menizzies. I think that was the biggest thing of it's yeah. that little bit of difference that no one will have. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was also, it's always been a thing to keep the family together, you know, as we get older and, you know, my generation, we're all different ages. We all have jobs and it's two days a year that we always get together and we do a family thing, you know, yeah. that's, that's most of what it is. Why my nan will always say, keep it going, but especially for, to not sell it and stuff like that. That was always our reason. And my father was always told me no one could have the menizzies except for us because that's how it is. It's passed in the family. When you guys make it too, like. How many um how many days does it take you and stuff like that? Is it how hard is it to make if someone at home wants to try with their family and, and start a tradition up? You it's know? um it's a science to say the least. <laughs> you know, you may have some people. I'm sure you could look up somewhere that'll show you a little bit more lines of how to do it and kind of what it entails. Um, 
but you know us making that much like i said we do two days in person and then it gets um you know you have to hang it obviously to dry now that all depends there's no specific day it all depends on weather because we don't use a controlled kind of you know some guys make coolers and stuff like that yeah so ours is completely controlled by weather sometimes it may take i don't know you know, one month, sometimes it may take three months. It all kind of depends, you know, but that's where I said it comes down to being a science mm -hmm. that it's been so long in my family that we have it down. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what it comes down to. So it just takes some practice. That's all I would say to anyone else. You can't get discouraged if the first year, some of them come out bad and you got to do it a few times before you get it down. I gotcha. And you even, know? um, I know even after you guys are like pretty particular about it. I remember I was cutting one up. Mm -hmm. um i was cutting one up i forgot where we were at or whatever but you like couldn't stand the sight of how i was cutting it up dude <laughs> cutting it too thick man yeah, it was gotta be nice it, and thin i was cutting it thick and you yep. literally couldn't stand the sight of me doing it so you took over the knife and you were cutting it real thin uh -huh. and i did yep. kind of notice like when it's thinner it tastes a lot better when you're cutting it and yep. also what i love what you guys do is you cut the skin off beforehand yep. so you're not freaking ripping off bite like pieces of skin every bite sure so sure. i don't know i th I like that too it's like you kind of just get it done with and then you mm -hmm. don't have to worry you could just eat because with those things you want to devour them <laughs> oh yeah absolutely no but that's the thing and that's my definite advice paper thin take a razor blade to that yeah thing. i was gonna Gotta say do dude I was, I was just gonna say it reminds uh -huh. me of um good fellas where he's got the razor so blade did, and yep. he's freaking doing it with the garlic it's <laughs> what you got to do yeah for yep. some reason thinner's always better man it's funny yep, yep. yeah but oh man it's it's just a cool tradition i know like i don't know you guys are super italian it kind of gelled with the company perfectly mm -hmm. yeah. and um i don't know man like i feel like we clicked right away with everything and it's still like clicking all the time and you know you're pretty much considered family to us here mm -hmm. and um you know that's yeah. likewise. Not to cut you oh, off. Yeah. You know that's likewise. No, 100%. Yeah. But mm -hmm. that's why, man, it's like, it's kind of funny because you'll do that and I'll make wine and we can kind of trade and stuff. And it's just mm -hmm. fun. Like, it's just, it's a cool uh, company culture, I'd say here. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's hardcore Italian is like the name goes. Yep. You yep. know, so I don't know, man. I just love it. And um, something about you too, man, and why I say you're like family is because you literally deal with my family every minute. Like, <laughs> I feel like nobody else knows my dad like you do or my mom like you do or mm -hmm. my family, my girlfriend even my friends you're probably my one buddy who like knows all my other buddies <laughs> yeah right <laughs> completely like if i brought up any one of my buddies to you know who they are and stuff so mm -hmm. right. it's cool man it's um we got a good thing going and it's like mm -hmm. I'm, we can trust each other with shit absolutely and as far as like how we've been grooving i mean we got to be in constant communication with how you order and kind of how i do the marketing we're planning months in advance for stuff mm -hmm. and um yeah I don't know I just it's it's cool man everything's uh everything's fun for sure around our here. plans coming together it's been a long time coming yeah <laughs> oh yeah exactly how long yeah. uh it's about to be our 10 year anniversary yes sir completely but it's it's probably what five years since we got the warehouse and you started yeah it's going on five years now yeah yep, yep. so you know if you guys are listening to this mm -hmm. uh keep that in mind the 10 year anniversary is coming up soon yep and we're gonna do something big for it I'm you know, we gotta we gotta figure out something because I'm like I want it to be one of our biggest mm -hmm. sales or biggest We've giveaways got or something. something. We can't give away too much. But we got <laughs> some stuff planned. Yeah. And everyone's listening. We got some stuff ready. Be you know, make sure you guys are ready for it. Yeah, there's some no, nice stuff uh, coming. It's coming this summer, so yep. give it a couple yep. months and and you guys will hear about it. Stay on the email. Mm -hmm. Um, stay subscribed to the podcast, whether it's on YouTube, Spotify, Apple. We're on all of it. And uh, guys, if you ever have any questions for us or you want to um, learn more about the company itself, please write us in, um, you know, DM us on the podcast page or comment on YouTube. And, you know, we're here to connect with the fans. We hope you guys learned a little bit about the business today, but the ultimate goal of this podcast is to connect with the fans. So if there's anything more you guys want to hear, please let us know and we're happy to answer it. So Absolutely. thank you, Santo, for uh, letting me disrupt your workday a little bit today. No, thank <laughs> I you. I know you got a million things going on down there, so <laughs> You're good. appreciate thank it, you. man. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully around a few more yeah. for sure. Thanks so. for tuning in, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.